Hello, my name is Dr. Carlo Karendang, and I'm a psychiatrist. Today, I will talk about computer anxiety. Computer anxiety is a type of specific phobia, also known as simple phobia. A specific phobia is an intense fear of an object or situation. So specific phobias could include things such as fear of spiders, which is also known as arachnophobia, or fear of heights. So these are, these are a couple of common specific phobias. So the feared object is avoided at all cost, and exposure to the feared object induces panic attacks. So if you have arachnophobia, then if you see a spider, then it can induce a panic attack, and therefore you try to avoid it so you don't have the panic attacks. So what is computer anxiety? Computer anxiety is an intense fear of using computers. And also, computers are avoided at all cost. So when you are exposed to computers, it induces a panic attack. And panic attacks are characterized by chest pains, racing heartbeat, shortness of breath, rapid breathing, sweaty palms, muscle tension, headaches, nausea, chills. So this is a very, very uncomfortable feeling to have a panic attack and therefore when you have computer anxiety you avoid computers at all costs to prevent the panic attacks. So what are the, the fears when you have computer anxiety? You might have a fear of breaking the computer or pushing the wrong key. You might have a fear of losing data. You might also be embarrassed that you are not familiar with computers. So in this day and age of social media, this might be magnified as you might have a fear that your incompetence or your perceived incompetence with computers is going to be broadcasted to others via social media. Or you might think that computers are a hassle and computers are frustrating as computers can have bugs and databases are always changing. So when you have anxiety symptoms, you need to figure out what type of anxiety you have to get the best help. So let's say you have significant anxiety symptoms. The first thing you need to figure out is if you have a severe case of depression. If you do have a severe, severe case of depression, then the depression needs to be treated first as there could be significant safety issues with severe depression. If you don't have a moderate to severe depression, then you need to figure out what is your predominant anxiety symptoms. So in this case, with computer anxiety, it's you have panic attacks with avoidant behaviors. And in this case, it's the discrete object or situation is a fear of computers. And this, in turn, is a specific phobia. So this is a useful chart as if you have one type of anxiety disorder, you usually have other types of anxiety. So this is a useful chart for looking at what type of anxiety you may have. So what's the prevalence of computer anxiety? Computer anxiety has a prevalence in the general population of 5% according to one study. Another study states that 21.3% of managers and professionals have computer anxiety. In another study, they looked at computer anxiety prevalence in three samples. Sample one in managers, sample two in graduate students, and sample three in undergraduates. So they, they found there was significant difference between sample one and two and sample one and three, but there was no significant difference between sample two and three. So what you see here is that undergraduates and graduate students have more rates of computer anxiety than say older managers. And there were significant differences between these groups. So the youngest cohort with earliest exposure to computers reported the highest rate 
of computer anxiety. So this is an interesting finding. However, the take home message is that even with the conservative estimate of 5% in the general population who have computer anxiety, it still affects many people and it could be disabling considering that computers are everywhere are everywhere now. So this is a good screening test for computer anxiety. This is a six item computer anxiety scale. So if you score above an 18 on this, then you may have computer anxiety. So here's the six item computer anxiety scale. So for each item, you indicate whether you strongly disagree, you disagree, mildly disagree, mildly agree, agree or strongly agree. So you answer the six questions here. I feel anxious and nervous while working on the computer. The harder I work at learning computers, the more confused I get. I have sometimes thought that I am too old to learn about computers. I have sometimes thought computers don't like me. I always have problems working on computers. And lastly, I can't usually manage to solve computer problems by myself. So you rate each of these six questions and then give a score of one to six according to your answer. And if you score 18 and above, then you might have computer anxiety. So here is an example of a negative cycle of specific phobia. Here we have triggers which are related to your thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. So your trigger is you see, hear, or think about a feared situation or object. The situation induces thoughts about the event. And you might have thoughts such as something bad is going to happen, I will not be able to cope, or I'm going to be harmed. These thoughts then induce anxiety, then you get the anxiety feelings and the physical effects of the adrenaline response, also known as the fight or flight response. And in this case, when you have a phobic fear of something such as computers or spiders, you can get panic attacks as I described earlier. And this anxiety makes you avoid. So you in turn avoid the fear, feared object or situation and you try to flee or escape. And the avoidance then maintains the belief in the danger and direness of the events. And this continues the negative vicious cycle of simple, of specific phobia. So let's go through each of these items of the negative cycle of specific phobia, phobia. And let's suppose you have computer anxiety. So the triggers are you can see the computer and this causes anxiety. You might talk about computers and this could induce anxiety or you might even just think about computers and this induces anxiety. So the event induces thoughts about the event. So you might have thoughts such as, quote, I will break the computer or, quote, I will push the wrong key or, quote, I will lose data or, quote, I will embarrass myself using a, a computer or, quote, computers are a hassle. These thoughts then induce anxiety and you also have fear and the physical effects of the adrenaline response, which can lead to symptoms of a panic attack. So the anxiety makes you avoid and you avoid computers at all cost. So although the avoidant behaviors decrease your anxiety over the short term, the behaviors actually maintain your overall anxiety from the feared stimulus. So the avoidance then maintains the belief in the danger and direness of events. So the feared stimulus induces thoughts, which induces anxiety, which compels you to avoid. So instead of just exposing yourself to computers and finding out nothing bad will occur, you just avoid computers and this maintains your belief in the danger. So with the avoidance, you never get to find out that the anxiety will just go away naturally if you just 
stay with your trigger. If you just sit at the computer and use it, then eventually it will go away. However, that is easier said than done. The solution then is cognitive behavioral therapy, also known as CBT. CBT helps to break the negative cycle of computer anxiety by changing how you think and what you do. It is difficult to change the way you feel, so the focus is on changing the way you think and the way you do things. So avoidance is addressed via exposure therapy. Exposure therapy is the most effective clinical intervention for computer anxiety. So exposure therapy exposes you to the phobic stimulus. So in this case, it's computers. So this results in extinction of the fear. So in studies, it has been shown that exposure therapy is associated with a significant reduction of hyperactivity in the amygdala. And this thereby normalizes amygdala activity. So in studies, when you have anxiety disorder, your amygdala is hyperactive. So uh, the amygdala is a part of your brain involved with fear processing and anxiety. So the amygdala is hyperactive when you have anxiety disorders. So it's been shown that exposure therapy actually works by normalizing amygdala activity. So the specific type of exposure therapy used is called graduated exposure therapy, which is also known as systematic desensitization. So you start with the exposure with which are less threatening, and then you gradually work your way up to more fearful stimuli until your fear begins to fade. In the meantime, you institute relaxation techniques to reduce the anxiety that's associated with the exposures. So what you do then is you build what's called a fear hierarchy. So you make a list of your fears and then you rank them according to least fearful to the most fearful, most fearful uh, event. So in this case, talking about computers is the least fearful stimuli. So you, you rate it here as a one. Whereas turning on the computer for 30 minutes alone is the most anxiety provoking and you rate it as a 10. So what you do is that you list your fears about computers in a fear hierarchy and you arrange it from the least fearful to the mo most fearful. So here you might start with talking about a computer. So you talk about a computer and then you do this and repeat this talking about computers until your anxiety subsides. So if you're able to handle talking ab about a computer and your anxiety subsides, then you go on to the next item on your fear hierarchy. Then you could start talking about using a computer. Then you could go up and talk about visualizing a computer, visualizing using a computer, looking at a picture of a computer, looking at an actual computer, turning on a computer for 15 minutes with a friend. So turning it on with a friend, a friend, having a friend available helps to give you the feeling that you're getting support and you're not alone. Then you might turn on the computer for 15 minutes alone. Then you might, then um, time, increasing your time with your fear stimulus is also more stressful than say 15 minutes. So turning on the computer for 30 minutes with a friend. Then finally, this is your most feared stimulus in this example that you turn on the computer for 30 minutes alone until you can continue with this exposure until your anxiety subsides and it does in time. So when you're doing the exposure work, you need to work also on relaxation. So relaxation techniques you might use include things such as progressive muscle relaxation, diaphragmatic breathing, and yoga. So these are examples of things you can do to relax 
um, when you're doing the exposure work. So the progressive muscle relaxation and the diaphragmatic breathing you can do actually during your exposure work and the yoga you can do in between exposures to decrease your overall anxiety levels. So what about medication? Well, antidepressants unfortunately are not effective for specific phobias such as computer anxiety. However, benzodiazepines are effective in the short term as an adjunct to exposure therapy. So repeat, benzodiazepines are effective in the short term, so they're not meant to be long-term treatments, just short-term treatments. And this um, benzos are only helpful as an adjunct to exposure work. There's another medication called D-cycloserine that helps to enhance the efficacy of exposure-based therapies by facilitating fear extinction during the exposure ses session. So this is another option, but you need to meet with your psychiatrist um, to discuss these two options. But benzodiazepines can be prescribed in the short term as an adjunct to exposure work. So what about, so how do you handle computer anxiety in the classroom? Well, computer anxiety can be reduced by providing a comfortable learning environment. So to create a comfortable learning environment, teachers should focus on using humor, so making it fun. They should focus on using basic concepts. They should avoid computer jargon, and they should make all computer lessons hands-on. So when you're teaching about computers, you should have them, the students at the computer, and they're learning while at the computer, hands-on. And um, the setup that is commonly used is that each of the students have a computer in class, and the teacher has a demonstration computer um, and is projected to PowerPoint so that others can follow along with the examples from the instructor. So that concludes my presentation on computer anxiety. But for more information and help on computer anxiety and other anxiety problems, please visit anxietyboss.com. Thank you for listening. I'm Dr. Carlo Carandang.